that helps you choose uh, the right format and the method to go about with uh, whatever you're writing. You know, whether it's an email or a letter um, or a report, name it. You name it and it is going to have a specific audience for it. Okay. So um, shall uh, we begin for today then? So I'm going to keep it simple today. Um, usually this uh, uh, tutorial is intended to have uh, um, activity sessions uh, it, it is not a lecture per se. I'm not going to be sitting here and giving you lectures. So I'll be talking about a couple of things and I'll also be interacting with you, um, taking responses from you. Uh, you will have um, time to clear your doubts if you have any, you can give feedbacks. And also uh, you will be taking in activity sessions. Okay, so you, basically you won't have take home assignments, you'll be having in class assignments. I think the mail that was uh, forwarded that was sent across did mention this. Uh, so uh, maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes of um, talking and then we'll get to our activities. Okay. But today I have kept it simple uh, because this is the first one. I want to get used to this format. And um, from next session onwards, we'll have serious activity sessions. Okay. Today too we have, uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a short one. Okay. So um, I'm, I'll share this PPT with you. Just give me a moment. Um, Aishwarya, are you here? Yes, yes, Lada. Aishwarya, um, I cannot uh, share my PPT. It says the host doesn't have permission to do that. The host disabled participant screen sharing says. Okay. Sri Balaji, can you please help us? Not here. Yeah, I'll I'll get back to you later. Give me a minute. Okay, no problem. Just tell me. I'll 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 meanwhile continue with this. Okay, so um, you know to begin with. I want to look at both these words separately, okay? You have professional writing. So we'll begin with uh, looking at both of these terms separately, right? So let's brainstorm for a moment here. Okay, I want to interact with you at this point. Uh, please um, tell me, um, what are the other words that come to you when I say the word professional? Okay, I'm not looking forward to uh, meanings and definitions of the word professional. Or rather, your answers and responses needn't be limited to the definitions and meanings. You can give me any related words. Okay. Any related words. Please, you know, it would be nice if you can, uh, you know, unmute yourself and speak one by one. Then typing it out, it will become difficult for me to look back at the chat. Although I will I'm also see. Ma'am, official. Official. Okay. No, Who else? Someone said writing. formal. Uh, formal. A bit more defined rather than no, proper. One at a time. Okay. Formal, layman. official. Aditya, what are you saying? A bit more defined rather than. Huh, okay. That more defined. Layman. Okay. No, proper. Proper. Okay. Skilled and expertise. Ma'am, uh, precise and, and concise. Precise and concise. Good. Okay. Systemized. Like a proper format of writing. It's systemized. They give a for, proper format like a syntax. Okay. You mean systematic? Yeah, systematic. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, structural. Conceptual, good. No, no, it's structural. Uh, structural. It's structural, okay. okay. Yeah. Structural. Yeah, yeah, yes. So that is systematic, right? Systematic yeah. and structural. Yes. Seek okay. to convey information and ideas quickly. Uh, can you give me one word for that? Huh? You know, this is also part of writing, okay? When instead of giving to phrases the point. and to the point, okay? You can, you know, next time onwards, uh, make sure that you can find one word for all of these, okay? Okay. Right? This is just an exercise. You know, you very soon you're going to look at concise writing, right? So, uh, it would be nice. I have a word. Yeah, tell me. Ma'am, polished. Something polished. Not amateur. Polished, yeah. Okay, polished. Or sophisticated sophisticated okay i'm going to come back and ask you all uh, you know what do you mean by all of these polished sophisticated so i'm going to go in a reverse fashion you know instead of taking definitions from you i'm going to get words and then ask you what do you mean by it 
right uh -huh. okay uh, i see somebody saying specified in the chat uh, sai jyoti says organized okay yeah okay so all of this anybody who is uh, who wants to say anything more you want to add to this um can we say academic writing academic writing is a yeah it is it is also a kind of professional writing okay uh okay. what i mean is uh, what do you understand by the word professional i'm looking for related words to uh professional the word professional not professional writing but you're right academic writing is a kind of professional writing okay yeah, we have other style uh, sorry other kinds as well mm. hmm. good yeah, so that that's that's a that's a large uh, you know uh, number of things that you've told me you've told me structured you've told me formal you've given me organized systematic and many many more okay now uh, now let's look at the word writing okay so you have all of these things with you you have formal systematic and everything else that you've told me now if you put it together with the word writing now can you tell me what it is now you can give your answers in sentences okay people who have not already spoken you can try okay not going to force you to speak uh, i i i am not i won't be able to come to all of you i see 115 participants so uh, uh, professional I'm, writing could be like uh, writing an email to a client okay that that's again a kind of professional writing fine but then okay. are emails only professional in nature do we write no. personal emails no, no, yes no. we do yeah we do yes right? i'm so, writing but, a paper but if it, it, yeah one second please let him finish but it depends upon the audience right yeah it depends on the audience okay nice i i like that it is progressing in the way i want thank you ha uh, huh. i mean a to... uh, a uh, methodical approach methodical approach uh, yes again we are coming back to the same systematic and other things approach right? hmm. towards an objective okay methodical approach to fulfill an objective yeah, yeah? yeah is yeah. that what you want to say yeah 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 right sure. okay right that that sounds good that sounds good professional writing uh, good evening ma'am yeah good evening good afnan evening. here uh, yeah. professional writing in my sense is that uh, which it, it is written to convey oh. a specific message a very specific message okay. to a very specific and targeted audience so is specific it right specific message to a specific and audience. targeted audience is I perfect i think that is in general what writing is That is in I'm, general uh, what in a workplace environment. Just don't forget that part. Yeah. Okay, in a workplace environment. Yeah. Expressing yeah. ideas or thoughts in a uh, like in a work in a workplace environment by our own methods. Hmm. Okay, so you right. know somebody was just mentioning. Someone just mentioned that you know it is writing in general to anybody. So uh, will a work of fiction be targeted for a specific audience? will it will the fiction writer you know whoever is the author of the uh, fiction will they release a uh, uh, say anything okay i don't want to take names of the authors of the work okay uh, but um, say anything that is truly fictional in nature uh, do you think the author is going to announce that uh, you know uh, so and so audience is targeted for this particular book no okay no no no, no. right that is not going to happen i mean it can i mean after you can develop a particular uh, fiction in a genre like you can have historical fiction or you can have science fiction or anything so people who are more interested in reading things could they would get a hand on that but the author himself or herself is not going to come out and say see this is meant for this audience but if you're reading a report for example right so to take an example you're reading a niti aayog report okay Uh, again niti aayog report is for the public but uh, then we know that every public is okay every person is not going to sit and read it so when they release a report it is intended for a particular set of people to work on their action oriented reports right agree or disagree uh, ma'am yeah ma'am as you said like, like if a writer just wrote a script then huh. it's like uh, it have but my uh, what i'm saying is it depends on the person who is reading it like uh, if that script Uh, hmm. a director is reading that then yes. uh, it's professional hmm. professional writing and if uh, a normal person is reading it then it's unprofessional well because uh, in business of writing uh, the hmm. script like that's what their profession is to write script yeah 
So Ma'am, it depends on the okay, person who is writing. Okay, I, I want to clarify one thing at the beginning. When when you say professional writing, it has got more to do with what you all mentioned in the beginning: formal, systematic, specific, etc. We don't we don't mean something that is written in a profession. Okay, while that could also be a part of it. In at a larger scale, you don't mean uh, by professional. You don't mean you know something that is written in this domain and okay, or written by professionals. Professionals in the sense doctors and lawyers. and teachers okay what we mean technically by the word professional is formal okay or as i just mentioned technical okay so uh, of course it's going to differ according to the audience but my point is about uh, uh, you know the point of fictional writer per se so nobody is going to go ahead and say that you know only these people are intended to read this so there is there is no uh, it is for the general reader okay it's not it doesn't uh, look for a specific audience right so if there is a uh, let me make it more clear you know if there is a report on um say uh, um what does this in come from what about newspaper reports newspaper Those reports are are, yeah they are intended, intended for general public no yes ma'am yes they like neutralized yeah it is neutralized or whatever you know people i mean it's an if it's an opinion column then obviously the author is going to plays in his opinion and politics and other thing but it is meant for the general audience it is not for a specific audience so uh, i'll come to this you know what we mean by specific audience needs to be uh, clarified further you know uh, once that's done you will uh, you will stop getting these doubts okay 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 right. excuse me leda sorry okay. for interruption hi shweta uh, you are, you are now the host you can present i can present right? okay. yes yeah. thank, you. Right. thank, thank you. you thank you leda yeah no problem Ma'am, I have something to add. Yes. What do you um, want to add? Yeah, ma'am. I just wanted to add that uh, uh, professional writing, in my opinion, is something which we are writing to uh, convince the uh, reader by giving our uh, judgments. Uh, sorry, not by giving specific arguments, proper arguments with the data, and uh, like just making them uh, our point of view clear to them. Hmm. in a sense to persuade them what we mean so that is what is a, a professional writing in my opinion in your opinion yes i am mm -hmm. not going to disagree with your opinion okay so you basically telling me that uh, uh, professional writing also can be to persuade right mm hmm 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 yes huh? to persuade someone. right so yes, that yes. is what i meant by saying that certain reports are intended for a particular set of experts because these are action oriented you want them to take actions on that okay this is not just a newspaper report which needs to be read and forgotten mm -hmm. right because that's what you usually do with newspaper reports anyway right you read mm -hmm. them and forget it that's all so mm -hmm. uh, but that is not how uh, uh, say a report on um, uh, women's participation in uh, health and hygiene in the country would be like it is meant for a certain set of audience while everyone can read it Mm -hmm. it is actually meant for a set of experts to take some action on it okay there is no uh, mm -hmm. limitation on who can read it everybody of course mm -hmm. anybody who can read english or whichever language it is written in can read but mm -hmm. it is intended for a specific set of people who work on policies related to that do you agree with that mm -hmm. or not yes ma'am i do yeah. agree with but yes. my uh, point of saying was from the uh, point of view of the uh, writer like what he or she wants uh, ah, yes you are right i yes. i am not disagreeing hmm. with you i am yes. not disagreeing with you i am just adding few points to what you have already said that's all yes ma'am okay yes. right uh, so um uh, okay now you have this broader idea about what professional writing generally is right so we all agree on this point that it is formal in nature it is uh, uh, systematic in nature it uses technical language okay all of these things we agree upon i think we're on a we're on the same page as um, um, when it comes to these things the only confusions for us is with respect to audience who can read it or who is it intended for okay so we'll we'll see we'll see if we can uh, settle this question as we go on okay now um but you know because we are at this point of uh, uh, i began talking about this uh, because somebody mentioned that uh, all these things are common to uh, any forms of writing that this is where we begin uh, so i want to tell you when when we talk about what is common for any point uh, any any kind of writing i think more than all of these things that we have mentioned uh, a very general point would be accuracy right whatever you are writing professional or uh, um, you know literary fictional whatever it is 
the major uh, point that you want to make, the major thing that you intend from a writer is that the writer is accurate, right? Yes or no? Are we here? Am I still with yes, you all? I have lost yes, you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, just uh, give me heads up once in a while, you know, so that I know that I'm still with you. Okay. So, yeah. So, what we mean is that whatever it is, whichever form of writing you're in, you know, whether it's business writing, professional writing, academic writing, whatever it is, what we mean is that we, we want you to be accurate as a writer. Okay. And while several factors would be, uh, can be mentioned under the verticals of accuracy, uh, when you talk about language, right, what we mainly mean or mainly refer to when you talk about accuracy is the structure and grammar of the language. And in our case, it is the English language. Yeah. Agree? Yes. 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 Yeah. So it can be many other things, right? I'm not denying, you know, I'm, I, I'm sure a lot of people would come and say, no, no, but accuracy could also mean this and that. Yes, sure. All of this. So um, accuracy is not just limited to this, but a larger part of accuracy in language refers to the structure and grammar. Right. So once you have that set, once you do these things, when, once you have a good um, clutch on these things, these two uh, factors, uh, you can say half of your job is done. Rest of it is building upon this. Yes? Right. So, um, there you don't have a, uh, you don't have any, uh, you know, you don't, you don't have any options to pick from there. This is absolute necessity. You, know, you have to be very well versed with this. Right. So, if you look at the, if you haven't, I don't know how many of the, um, the lectures have been released for you for English too. So, uh, or, or if there are people who have already taken English too, you know, that uh, that course will have uh, what I just mentioned, you know, those uh, structures and grammars. English one yes, had it too, but English two also has it, okay? But this time a bit more advanced and complex structures and grammar, right? So while you're taking, while you're coming to the tutorials uh, session, make sure that you're also looking at all these videos carefully because uh, I will be taking, I will be talking about a few things that's already mentioned there and you'll see how well these things are connected in this. Okay, so that should help you with it. So please uh, follow up with that. And um, um, is the slide changing for you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma thank you. Thank yes, you. So just look at that. You know, uh, what you have on the screen is uh, a summary of what we were discussing. Okay, just quickly have a look at it. So the first uh, factor, the first uh, thing that is important in professional writing is a style of writing. The one which you just mentioned about being systematic and formal and everything else. Okay. So you, what do you do? It's a style of writing uh, used in delivering technical information on a subject. Now, is that a satisfactory uh, sort of definition? I won't call it a definition. It's a satisfactory uh, explanation for you. A style of writing used in delivering technical information on a subject. Yeah, it's yes. an approach, I can say. Yeah, it's an approach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you have examples of all of them, right? See, catalogs and user manuals, brochures. These are different from what you had mentioned, emails and letters and everything. So even these things are a part of professional writing. Okay. Right. So uh, the second point is about the intended audience. So what is it? The intended audience is specific and, sorry, and needs to possess recommended levels of knowledge on the subject in order to understand the content okay this is where we were stuck at no a few of us uh, were discussing on um, whether uh, a particular sort of writing is suitable for the other so it's about suitability right uh, what i wanted to say uh, say was that in in case of fiction you do not have this problem okay uh, once you start reading science fiction, you get used to the language of science fiction and uh, uh, two, three books down, you're, you're very familiar and you know what, to, uh, what you're reading and what, you're, uh, uh, what they are writing about. Okay. But that is not the case of uh, uh, the uh, when you talk about professional writing. These are intended for people who are professionals in the field. So that there's going to be a lot of usage of words, um, vocabulary, uh, many other structures, which is intended only for them. Okay, we use the word uh, technical jargon for it. However, it is recommended that you do not use too much technical jargon unless the people or the participants and the audience that you are uh, talking to are, you know, you're sure about them that, okay, these are people from my area. So they will understand. Even if, see, there are many engineers in this group, right? You're all from different uh, departments. 
if i ask you to speak something on engineering all you can do is give a uh, general understanding of something in engineering right speak about something that is general in engineering or even if you want to speak about computer science as engineering you have to be mindful of the uh, diversity of your audience right you know that i am not allowed to use certain kind of phrases and uh, words and other things because it may not be accessible to everybody in this audience right so intended audience sometimes um, it can range from general to specific but even within that general you expect the people who come to you to know something about the topic that you're speaking beforehand is that clear Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is yeah. no confusion with respect to that. No, you, your audience okay. can be general to specific, so it can, you know, it will uh, vary in its range. So, but even within the general audience that you have, even if you say like, you know, an audience like this, maybe, uh, uh, or you know, some of us are not engineers here, but imagine if there were only engineers here. Even in that case, you will have to be mindful of uh, what kind of what what is the mix of audience that you have. Okay, that's what it's meant. so in that sense uh, even uh, in the case of a general audience uh, professional writing will expect you to be a bit specific okay uh, in the sense that you you expect your listeners to know certain uh, things about what you're going to talk beforehand fine fine with it okay yes, yes ma'am and and then the last one um, is the purpose you should have a clearly defined purpose it should have a purpose to serve like i mentioned in the case of the uh, niti ayog reports it should have you know it should be addressing a particular issue or a problem uh, that concerns the area that you are working in if i am talking about women uh, health and hygiene then it it needs to have a purpose it needs to select a sample space and then uh, speak with a uh, purpose to the intended audience okay it cannot be a vast topic like uh, uh, it, it cannot be something as vast as women in politics okay that's a very general topic but women in health and hygiene uh in the state of uh, uttar pradesh okay that is going to be more specific if i want to go down again i can come down to a specific district of uttar pradesh where we have detected a certain kind of problem uh and if you want the women of that area to contribute to that uh, that particular um uh, any particular activity that is taken up by the gram sabha or the gram panchayat you know all of these things you you are bringing it down you are you are cutting down to the purpose making it more specific more uh, clear come down to the niche of the affair okay all of this will be a part of the purpose so stating the purpose uh, will involve coming down to the specifics as much as possible okay when you may when i say you need to state the purpose that is what i mean okay be very very specific about what you are writing okay okay yeah? ma'am okay see if you have any doubts if you have any um, Uh, anything else to add you can do this okay this is uh, i told you in the beginning that this is supposed to be an interactive session uh, you don't have to keep listening to what i'm saying if you have things to add you can add or if you have uh, doubts to clear you can do that just make sure that we don't uh, you know end up making a mess that's all i hope uh, these things are clear to you right i don't have to go over again uh, yes, but sure. in case if you have any problem please uh, you can talk so uh, i have a question meaning uh, yeah. we said that uh, the writing uh, needs we need to specify the purpose of writing so is it accompanied with the uh, writing itself or is it like uh, needs to be a sort of a summary where do, where does the specification of the purpose usually reside is it in the title somewhere no not necessary the title is uh, something that gives away the purpose yes one of the spaces where you can do that but that is not limited to the title you can like you know look at uh, uh, you know an easy example for me is an email so if you want to state the purpose of an email you will state your purpose maybe right in the subject line of the email but that doesn't mean that you are not going to talk about it in the body of the email right, right? right. or in the case of a letter uh, if you are writing a formal letter you are going to mention the subject of the uh, what is the subject of the formal letter it is the purpose you're stating the purpose for writing to someone that doesn't mean you're not going to talk about it in the body you have to talk about it. right okay that is so, just a ha huh. so in its entirety uh, the purpose yeah. should be clear what's the right. intention behind the uh, absolutely yeah your purpose you you state the purpose and then your body of whatever you're writing it develops your purpose that's all you know mm -hmm. adding details to it that's all right Thanks. okay um what, what is style of writing is it a theme or 
some specific way it's a specific way it's a theme okay mm -hmm. but more importantly a specific way of writing here style intense see uh, the word style in the slide means whatever was told in the beginning of this session okay remember all those uh, you know plethora of words that was uh, discussed formal systematic okay that's style okay okay, okay. Uh, Ma'am, uh, one thing to add, uh, if yeah. someone uh, is trying to uh, give some uh, personal opinions, uh, I mean, uh, in uh, a specific topic that is being delivered, uh, sometimes uh, we see that uh, at the end or at the middle, there is uh, somewhat of a personal opinion uh, that is being merged. Uh, in, uh, so will that uh, happen in it, uh, in it or uh, we shouldn't do that? Personal opinions. Okay, uh, we are going to yes. we are going to look at that. I I am going to talk about that at the next moment. Okay, we'll we'll see that. Usually not. The, to uh, give you a quick answer, no. Okay. Uh, technical reports and documents will not uh, have um, personal opinions, uh, or rather, we don't call them opinions in professional writing. We call them recommendations. Okay. So the problem with opinions are uh, that uh, opinions usually don't, uh, usually, okay, I'm not saying always, but usually uh, opinions are biased usually, right? So they don't uh, follow from facts necessarily. It could be uh, perceptional in nature, but in professional writing, you don't, you don't uh, uh, expect people to be giving perceptions. Things need to be more factual, okay? It needs to be more direct and factual in nature, okay? We'll talk about it, but just to, to quickly answer your question, it is no. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, um, right. So now we'll 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 move on to the next uh, slide. Okay. So this is see what the difference is between professional and literary writing. Now, what you see here is um, this is not an exhaustive uh, list that I have compiled. Okay. You can add more things to it and make it exhaustive. Okay. That is for you to do. Uh, what I intend to do is, I just want to give you an idea about what do we mean by these differences. When you say that, hey, I'm talking about professional writing and it is different from your other kind of writing, I just want you to know what we mean. So your questions about what do you mean by style and what do you mean by uh, purpose and uh, specific audience and all, I think some of those questions can be answered here. Okay, like look at this. Um, it manages, uh, so, uh, manages technical information. This is for professional writing so as to take suitable actions, right? So this is action oriented. Your other kind of writings needn't be action oriented. It can be general form of writing, okay, right? So uh, the, uh, the one you have here is literary writing, but even if it is not, um, if it is general writing, like, you know, somebody was mentioning about script writing, right? It is not action oriented. You don't intend to take any action on that script, do you? No. So uh, the major difference, the first difference could be that one is action oriented and the other, um, it needn't be an action oriented thing. It could be well, uh, very much written to entertain and amuse or maybe just for the sake of reading, you know, general information, that's all. Now, uh, the second one is to inform and instruct. You can add anything to it. So you can say to inform, instruct, persuade, influence, all of those would fall under professional writing, okay. Uh, next, uh, it is direct, it is factual, it is specific and straightforward. Okay, that this, this is self-explanatory. I think I don't have to go over it, right? Uh, uh, so I think the, some, the person who is asking uh, right now about personal opinions, you know, do you say this? Uh, this is what I was meaning to say, that uh, it, it cannot be perceptional, it needs to be factual. Whatever you want to say, you need to uh, uh, base it down with facts. Because only if it is based on facts can you say that something is objective. If you're going to keep it perceptional, uh, like in the case of opinions, then it's going to be, uh, it, it's not going to be factual in nature. It's not going to be objective in nature. Both of which is not good for professional writing. Okay. Uh, the next one is about uh, style. Now, in, 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 in style, uh, what is also included is the uh, tone, language, vocabulary, other things. So look at this, uh, it makes use of technical vocabulary, simple sentences, impersonal and objective tone. Now, technical vocabulary, 
uh, I think we had a discussion about this. Technical vocabulary is that which, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's intended again for, uh, so like I said, from general to specific. Okay, uh, specific could be, say, a team of doctors discussing about the um, open heart surgery of a patient. Okay, they are going to use a lot of terms that is known to each other. All of them are cardiologists. They will have uh, specific terms that they use for this purpose. And they will know that, you know, whatever words they use, it, it would be understood by the next person. So that would be very specific. However, uh, say uh, there's a team of doctors, there's an anesthetist, there's a cardiologist, then there's a neurosurgeon then they are going to be more, uh, they will keep it a little more general than uh, uh, how it would be between a team of cardiologists. You get that difference? Okay. It's a little tricky, um, but it's not difficult to understand. All we mean is that the, uh, the there would be a range of vocabulary from uh, general to specific, but even in the general, it will uh, keep it a bit more specific in the sense that you will, uh, you will, you will expect your listeners or your audience to know certain things beforehand like in the in this case the doctor okay you intend the doctors to know some certain things in general but the cardiologist will know something uh, more specific in the case of uh, heart or open heart surgery or whatever it is okay that point clear yes ma'am yes yes ma'am ma okay thanks yes, ma'am all right and then from there, you can move on to a uh, specific audience. So specific audience is this, what we just discussed. Okay. Uh, while in the case of literary writing, now you know. You know everything that happens in literary writing. Okay. You know the forms of literary writing. Okay. It could be poems, novels, um, drama. Okay. Anything. Anything in that range. Mostly written to entertain and amuse. Okay. Written for the sake of pleasure. Okay. Uh, then uh, it involves techniques such as uh, hyperbolean metaphors. Now, these are figures of speech. We, we won't go into the details of what these things are. Uh, just uh, know them as uh, certain figurative devices in uh, language, okay, which go beyond literal meanings. Okay, when you use these uh, uh, devices, um, they, these devices don't give you the literal meanings of uh, the situation or the words that you use. They will mean beyond what it is, beyond the literal. Okay? And why they are used? Uh, they are used to bring in uh, imagination and creativity. Uh, I will pause at this moment and I'll ask you a question. Uh, what do you think about this uh, factor of creativity in literary writing? You think professional writings don't promote creative uh, writing? Does it, does it not allow creativity? Or I'm if it allows, really, then what do does. you think? What kind of creativity does it allow? Okay, I'm going to keep it open. I'm not saying yes or no. I'm asking you. Also, I would agree it does. Uh, so mm -hmm. professional writing uh, is about giving the technical information, how you uh, make the readers more uh, mm -hmm. uh, attuned to the idea of what the context is. Uh, okay. How do you uh, you know proceed with the specifications? Uh -huh. How do you right. uh, list it down? Thank you. I, uh, that is, uh, I take that. Uh, but can you talk with uh, respect to language specifically? You know, because this uh, word creativity has come up in the context of using figurative devices, right? I think, uh, it, uh, I think it allows in uh, terms of content only. In terms of... Uh, okay. Uh, how... Uh, Ma'am, One at a time, please. Who's speaking? Ma'am, I'm speaking Chanakya. Okay, please uh, tell me, Yeah, yeah, uh, go ahead. I think, ma'am, the range of the uh, words used to describe the creativity in professional writing lies in the uh, pro professional jargon, ma'am. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, for example, if uh, the audience is of a uh, big category, hmm. so how uh, the, uh, the author or the speaker hmm. uh, creatively uh, uses uh, technical content and presents to them uh, in a way that every can, everyone can understand it in a very e easy to understand language. Okay, okay. You, I think you haven't yet come to this point. You know, okay. Uh, what does creative um, uh, language? Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, I would like to say that, like in professional writing, uh, what we write means the content. We already know they are like uh, uh, they are like facts or ah. the things we need to inform the targeted yes. audience. So we are we already know. So their creativity we can 
Uh, we already know or we don't know. Okay, certain things you learn too. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, the the creativity in professional writing comes in presentation. How we present our hmm. data or the information we want to give. So, how do you present? Audience. How do you present? Yeah, what that, is your that, single that, most tool that you use to present? Uh, ma'am, like uh, the the way that uh, it depends on the audience. Now, the uh, ah, that, okay, uh, wait, the, what wait. the category of that's the audience creativity. that how how we. Uh, we'll, I remember. Uh, are you are you intending visual creativity? In, uh, literary writing. Do you mean visual creativity? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. In professional writing, the content we already know, but visual creativity is the part. And in literary okay. writing, the creativity comes in the content only. Okay, this is this is what I wanted to ask. Do you think that professional writing does not allow creativity with respect to words and language per se? It it only not allows you creativity much, uh, in terms of visual. I'm a little more informal. Uh, not that much. Create a bit. One at a time, please. If you've already I, spoken, I'm, let I'm, others uh, speak, please. Uh, Ma'am, what I'm I wanted to. Much. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Uh, ma'am, what? Not that much. It uh, allows me. Okay. Ma'am, I'm what not I think is, uh, each profession has its own way of uh, uh, visualizing things without having to uh, be informal. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. No. We are not talking about formal and informal. That is sorted out. You know, we know what is informal and uh, uh, what is formal as of now. Okay, what I mean is, you know, look at that sentence. Language use involves techniques such as hyperbole, metaphors, etc., to bring in uh, imagination and creativity. Now, you cannot use metaphors and hyperboles to uh, in in your professional writing. Why? The reason is it is going to confuse your readers. Your readers may not be well equipped with the metaphors you use. It may not uh, sometimes uh, using these things may not fit the context. It would be out of uh, uh, it would be out of tune with the Um, um, range of topic that you're writing on. All of these things is managed. Uh, I am trying to tell you that language. Professional. Yeah. Let me finish. You can talk after that. Uh, so what I'm trying to tell you is language in itself has the property which lets you uh, create sentences that are different to each other. Right? You have one idea, and the same idea you can present in different ways using different sentences and different words. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. yes? Ma right. So, don't you think that is creative? Okay. See, our idea of creative is limited. That's what I understand. When when I say creative, all you are trying to uh, imagine is visual effects and you know all those things that would uh, attract the um, attract, which is which looks attractive to the eyes. Okay. But when we are talking about language, language gives you this immense opportunities to play around with words. right if i am writing an essay i might have a point and when i am developing it i am going to make sure that i use a variety of words to say these things i am not going to if i had uh, for example let's take what we were talking about the emails right so i state the purpose of uh, my writing an email to someone in the subject line uh, using certain words right now the same purpose when i am going to write down in my body uh, of the email i am going to use different set of words or sometimes the same depending on you know uh, who i'm writing to what i intend to do and other things right so i'm saying we have options within language which is your words and uh, unlimited opportunities within your language to uh, say these things in creative way okay you have a word for that in um, okay i don't want to give you technical terms that's why i'm not i'm i'm not using it on purpose because i want to keep you at the word creative and still uh, you know make you understand what i mean by using creativity in professional writing okay all i mean is you 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 write you draft a document which doesn't look dull boring repetitive okay uh, we, we 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 don't want it right if you're writing an essay you want to look every sentence has to look new but the ideas that you're presenting is not going to change you might have two or three ideas you will be elaborating on these ideas yet you will have so many different ways to say these things again reinforce those ideas again okay in case you want to reinforce those you always have an option in language uh, to do that yes agree ma'am i wanted to add something uh, ma'am tell me tell me i can hear you okay ma'am so i read this blog about like uh, friendship of calculus so it was like uh, really like it looked as if it was literary writing because they 
introduced हाँ. us to the idea of calculus by using like friendship. हाँ. And so, in which category would you put like? I mean, it is professional writing because the uh, the person who is writing is writing it is um trying to communicate like transfer this idea of calculus from so, his head no, no, to that happens in literary this. writing too. The person who is writing is trying to convey and pass on certain ideas to the reader. Okay. So no, this what you are talking about uh, is it won't be professional writing. It is going to see this is the same idea in science fiction, right? A lot of people who read science fiction they know that they are uh, reading about specific things in science, right? Um, but, but it is intended to like introduce calculus to like children, but like uh, these are is... experimental styles, but they won't come under the traditional categories of professional writing. That's all I can say. Okay, I uh, I won't say I'm against that kind of writing. It is good. It's an experimental method of doing that. We we can do any of these things. But uh, in the traditional sense of the term, or in the strict sense of the term, professional writing, this shall not be counted. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. You know, your question was whether this was professional. Will will this be counted as professional or not? Right. So I'm saying yes. in the strict sense of the term, professional writing, no. Okay. because you have several things to uh, you you need to check all these boxes in order to call something a professional writing okay there can be overlaps there uh, but uh, the stricter sense of the term will not uh, identify or uh, approve what you've just mentioned as professional writing okay what about a uh, government yeah hello hello yeah yeah i can hear you who is this yeah this is manal i am asking i am asking what about a government press uh, release government press release is a professional uh, it it involves professional writing okay okay yeah, yeah. yes hello anything Ma'am, that comes from an official source is professional writing okay uh, anything that is uh, that carries official messages uh, or comes from an official source or government source or uh, you know a company head or anything they are all professional in nature Okay. Okay. Hmm. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, ma'am, the research papers what people are writing in journals or conferences they will come under professional, professional writing. writing. Yes. Professional writing. Definitely professional writing. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So no, but I you haven't answered my uh, you know question about creativity. You do you agree with me? No, that it may not allow figurative language yet it allows creativity in a very different way. I right. think, ma'am, that uh, excuse me. Please continue. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm done. Tell me. Yeah, I, I think that uh, professional professional writing also allows us to be creative, but mm -hmm. within a limited extent. So you know, uh, like mm -hmm. you said before, that it should not be ambiguous to the reader. What what is uh, what is meant by what? So, so as so you, as long you as you agree that it allows. Yeah, you it, agree. It allows. it allows. Yes, right? I agree. Yes. And you you understand in what terms we mean by it allows, right? Yeah, it allows as long as your writing remains professional. So you have to right. be within the bounds of the professional. Right, right. That's uh, all I want to know. Yeah, uh, exactly. The point I am trying to drive across is, uh, you know, that language gives you opportunities to be creative, even without the use of all these figurative. It's also a part of the language. But even in the case where you are not allowed to use it, there is immense opportunities in language to do that. That's all. Okay, that was. You can remain uh, professional I... and uh, at the same time can be creative also. So True. that's the thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, creative uh, just means I, doing things differently. That's all my point was. It needn't be anything specifically like you know. You it doesn't have to be visual or uh, figurative or anything. That's all I meant. Right? Yes, ma'am. Professional writing could be simply defined as writing with a certain etiquette. Hmm. Yes. Take your point. Right. So, mm. uh, yeah. Uh, to uh, continue with what we were doing, so it appeals to your emotions. Yes, these things we know. It makes use of complex. sentence structures and linguistic aspects such as ambiguity dialects now this is what we mean by what kind of language is allowed okay so uh, dialects not allowed you always are uh, expected to use a standard language okay whichever uh, is the standard language practice you will have to use that and this is where your structure and grammar comes handy okay you need to be very well versed with it otherwise it's going to be difficult you know all slangs accent spoken language all of this won't be allowed in professional writing because see this is a documented source this needs to be 
um, uh, accessible to people in case to everybody in the world. Okay, not just people who are from a certain uh, geographical um, location, right? So for for that matter, for that reason, it needs to remain uh, universal in nature, and hence it has to follow the formal uh, structure of uh, formal structures and grammar of the language. Okay, um, right. Huh. Okay, so uh, moving on from that, now what, what is it that you see as elements of professional writing? The first one you have is organized and developed paragraphs, okay? So we are going to look at one part of it in today's class, that is, uh, how do you, you know, how, what are the patterns of organization in paragraph? You have two in there, organized and developed paragraphs. The developing paragraph part we'll see in the next class. Uh, for today's class, I'm going to specifically deal with the uh, organization of pa paragraphs, the patterns in organization of paragraphs, okay? So in addition to organized and developed paragraphs, uh, what else do you find in professional writings? What are the other elements? You see appropriate writing style. Again, you will have a detailed uh, discussion on what do you mean by appropriate writing style? Okay, we'll have a uh, how of all of this. How and what, you know, what do you mean by appropriate writing style and how do you do that? Uh, same goes for clarity of ideas and the last is spelling and grammar. Okay, so this uh, spelling and grammar part, a lot of it is going to be covered in your English 2 course. Uh, that should that should be helpful. Okay. So, um, you, so you can see the slide, no? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So look at that. You have a, a set of patterns that you will see uh, in a paragraph. Uh, um, okay. A set of patterns. Sometimes, if you're writing an essay, you can see a mix of all of these. Okay. Or if it is a report, you will see just one of these. Okay, so it depends, the patterns that you use in the organization of a paragraph depends on what you are writing. Again, the same thing. It depends on the purpose. It depends on the audience. Okay, uh, it depends on the organization that you work in. Depends on who you are writing to. Okay, who do you want to address? Okay, uh, you will choose one of these patterns. In uh, general essays, you might see maybe, you know, a mix of all of these. You will see a general to specific pattern, specific to general pattern. Uh, chronological order, okay? All of this can be found in one single place as well. I'm, I'm saying that uh, you, while you can find these things, uh, all of these in at one place, you can also have documents which follow just one of these patterns, okay? Like for example, look at priority order. Priority order is a pattern of organization that you usually find in uh, minutes of meetings, okay? When you're writing minutes of meetings, you know, you, uh, or when you're setting the agenda for the meeting, this is what you do. Okay, you, you, you follow a priority order, what, what should be discussed first, what comes next, and, the, and so on and so forth. Okay, chronological order, if you're chronicling something, you, know, you want to, uh, if, suppose you're preparing a manual which talks about um, a step-by-step -step guidance in uh, training in firefighting, okay, for example. It needs to follow a chronological order and a logical order, okay? So it has to be step by step. You cannot write the first thing last and the last thing first, right? It needs to follow a logical order. Uh, so uh, that will specifically follow the pattern of chronological order, right? Whereas uh, if you're writing an essay on climate change or, you know, mm, mm, say anything, anything related to that, then you will have paragraphs, multiple paragraphs, which might at times be general to specific, at times be specific to general sometimes it can also uh, slip and slid into cause and effect problem solution patterns okay you can have a mix of all of these right but uh, to begin with <clears throat> we have the, these are the general patterns these are the uh, these are some of the patterns that we use in organizing a paragraph okay we'll we'll look at two of them today we'll discuss the problem solution cause effect and uh, chronological order in the next class Today, we are going to discuss what uh, is general to specific and specific to general. Okay, clear till now? Yes, ma'am. Yes? Yes, ma'am. All right. So now you, I want you to look at the <coughs> slide here and please read what this is. Okay, read on your own. This is an example for a general to specific pattern of organization in uh, paragraphs. Okay. This will be informative to you too. This is on writing. Okay. So uh, it, it will not just tell you what a general to specific pattern is, but it will also tell you what writing is too. So it's informative that in that sense. Please read it.
right <clears throat> done reading yes ma'am yes should we wait uh, for a couple of more seconds that uh, you know, there are people who have not yet finished reading so it's a, it's a short paragraph okay so uh, so so what do you understand you know you you what do you understand from this general to specific before i tell you what it is you know i want to know from you what what did you after having read this paragraph tell me what did you understand about gender to specific explain the paragraph to me okay first thing which we uh, which i get is that like learning uh, learning to uh, write effectively is not uh, like natural ability it's a uh, hmm. thing that uh, that we acquire by practicing okay next thing which i get is like while we are writing something there can be there can be uh, uh, the whole paragraph focuses on the first idea and the, then it describes upon mm. it like the mm. learning to write can be uh, involves different uh, procedures first is knowing the alphabetical structure of the language knowing the grammar then mm. knowing how to form sentences mm. then how to exactly write that's the last part of it okay yeah so so you get that order right so it has uh, given you a very general statement about writing in the beginning about what it is and then it has given you uh, this range of um, methods in how you can develop your range of methods through which you can develop your writing okay uh, based on what comes first and uh, what goes next etc right so do you see that uh, uh, so is is general to specific the only thing that you see here in that sense please answer this question for me ma'am uh, in this case uh, yeah. i would say that uh, uh, in the paragraph what is is written that uh, first of all we have to uh, b- choose the language first hmm. because uh, writing is not only limited uh, to the hmm. european uh, alphabet which we are currently using but also uh, other forms of uh, writing languages uh, mm. uh, for example uh, in chinese or something like that they have a different mm. form of thing so writing uh, is not only limited uh, to uh, paper or to language barrier but we have to choose uh, we have to uh, then uh, from general uh, we language we should choose the writing system yes right. uh, yes sir uh, uh, yes we have ah. to uh, choose the writing language and then we have to narrow it down to the audience we are uh, specifically uh, intended to write uh, right to right i i get it i get it i think that's what uh, the uh, person who went before you said that it is giving you a general idea in the beginning about what writing is and then it is going on and explaining it, it goes ahead and uh, explains to you what uh, what are the different ways in which you can do that. okay uh, or what are the different uh, i'm not using the word purposefully because i want to know something else from you okay it in, so it it goes ahead and uh, explains how to achieve it okay let me put it that way so i know i just mentioned something uh, in the slide before that you know uh, sometimes your paragraphs or your uh, documents may not follow just one single pattern right we are discussing this in uh, in terms of general to specific but i wanted to know can i you. add one thing yeah, yeah ma'am sorry to interrupt but uh, um, i i just want to add that uh, apart from general to specific pattern uh, mm-hmm. i can also see the priority order pattern to be followed here clarity um, order or chronological order what did you intend to say so chronological is like when we talk in respect to years or dates uh, that is what i infer as uh, being called as chronological because uh, i think it is more of priority no because... not necessarily it is not in terms okay. of years and uh, dates, you know, dates. Okay. it is uh-huh. it is a it, chronology means step by mm-hmm. step that's okay. what i was telling right okay, okay. so it's about what comes first what goes next and mm-hmm. the next okay mm-hmm. it, it doesn't have to be 1971 and then 72 and 73 and all that okay, so okay. so to so please get this okay chronology is not something that is limited to numbers okay it is mm-hmm. chronology means order it just mm-hmm. means order okay nothing okay. more it follow you need to follow a logical order that's all it mm-hmm. means okay mm-hmm. so dates and numbers and all those things are not necessary chronology is an order it's a step by step thing so how mm-hmm. do you get you're right okay so i wanted you to answer this only so along with general to specific mm-hmm. 
uh, pattern, you also see a logical, yeah, logical chronological logic. pattern here. Right? Yes, yes. And how do you get it? These hints you get from the language itself. Okay, we'll yeah, look at this yes. more clearly as yes. you know our uh, tutorials go ahead in the coming sessions. Yes. yes. But look at that. There is yes. the first by the area. words like yeah, the yeah. first skill area. First skill second area. Skill area. Second skill yeah. area. The third yeah. stage. So it goes mm -hmm. in by that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like look at it. No, it makes sense. The first thing you have to do is to get hold of a writing system. One, unless you have that, you cannot uh, proceed with anything in case of writing, right? Yes. It's 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 different from other skills, right? So uh, yeah, so that's what I meant. Okay, is it uh, are others following or are you? Hello, ma'am. Ah, I have a question. Uh, let's say we are writing in one particular topic. We are writing, then we are starting with an introductory section. So in the introduction, we have three or four paragraphs. Hmm. So from the beginning of the introduction, we are generalizing the concept. Means uh, then we are focusing to we are focusing towards the particular hmm. point about which we are explaining. For okay. example, let's say my target is on explaining the EEG signal. So I will start from what is neuroscience. Then from hmm. there, I will slowly move towards the different types of signals which will be yes. an analyzed in neuroscience, such hmm. as EEG, EOZ, EMG like that. And then I will go in the second paragraph, I will move towards the EEG signal. Hmm. So my question is that if in the first paragraph, let's say I'm explaining what is neuroscience and what are the different signals hmm. and why I want to move towards the EEG and I am closing my first paragraphs on that. And in the second paragraph, I'm starting explaining what is EEG signal exactly. Okay, so let me tell you in the beginning, I do not know what an EEG signal is. Okay, so I do not know whether it's a part of the neuroscience or is neuroscience a part of that. I I, I think it is part of neuroscience, is it? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, so then you're moving from general to specific now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Means uh, if huh. I'm starting from neuroscience, means one one information I can give you on that. Huh. Yeah, neuroscience is one branch in which different signals are getting means okay. analyzed. I get this your point. Uh, I get your point. So okay. what what was your question again? My question is, if I am explaining this part, let's say my target is to explain on EEG signal, from hmm. where I start, means if I am starting with neuroscience, it is an elaborated general concept. That depends. I'll tell you. If you're writing an introductory textbook on neuroscience. Okay. Okay. Then uh, the way of writing would be different. But if you're writing a research article in, uh, you know, whatever you, you easy signals, yes, whatever yes. you're saying, then you're yes. writing it for an audience who already knows these things. So you don't have to sit down and explain neuroscience to them. They okay. know they are they are neuroscientists or they are experts in that field. So they will okay. understand these, whatever you want to talk. So okay. you can be more specific. All you have to do is uh, give a background to. Uh, the specific thing that you're going to discuss, which is your EG signals, I suppose. Okay. Yes, or, yes, yes. Exactly. Right. So you don't yes. have to start with the whole uh, thing about, you don't have to present the whole literature to them there because now you're talking to a specific audience. Whereas yes. if you're writing a textbook for yes. uh, students of a college, you know, or uh, uh, say to train a particular group of uh, uh, professionals, then it, it's different. Then it is intended that you give a background in neuroscience so that, you know, you can build it. Say this is what the background is. This is neuroscience, and within that you have all of these things, etc., so on and so forth. Okay, okay. that's the difference. So okay. again, I be, I come back to the point. It depends on who you are writing for, your audience, and your purpose of writing is the main point. That will decide everything. Means who is the targeted audience? <clears throat> for what? It could Means be anybody. I told you, like in the, in the case, no. So if if you're writing a, an introductory textbook, it is usually written for students. Right. Okay. If you if you intend to teach, if you want to, uh, you know, publish a book which is an introductory uh, material in neuroscience, then who is it intended for? It's for college going students, right? Yes. Who yes. don't? Who, where you want to give in the basics? And in the other case, uh, the research article. Who is your audience? It's your peers, right? Your peer yes. researchers are your audience. So the, that's the difference. Okay. So means when writing, we have to know that who is our targeted audience. Means for whom exactly. we are. Writing. Exactly. Okay, yeah. clear, clear. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Very okay. Much. All right. So others, you you have caught this point with me, no? That you you have seen this. That uh, you you have a you have two patterns here. You have general to specific and chronological uh, order here. But did you catch the general to specific pattern? Did you understand how it developed? It first gave a a very general idea about what writing is, and then it went on to talk about how to achieve it in a more specific sense. Right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma um, is it like in the first few lines, like summarizing the whole thing and then specifically telling them in the next few lines? No, no. Uh, when, sorry, come again. What did you mean? Like in the first few lines, just summarizing the whole thing and then in the, in the next few lines, just specifically telling 
No, it's not summarizing so, anything, you know. It, it's just giving you a general statement on writing, what writing is. Right? Just Look writing a the theme or something. Ah, no, not theme, writing. So that we'll discuss when we talk about developing paragraphs. It's also called a topic sentence. Okay. So okay. look at this. Writing is a complex socio-cognitive process involving the construction of recorded messages on paper or on some other material and more recently on a computer screen. So there's a very general statement given about writing. And yes, then they go ahead to talk more about how do you build it. That's all. Right. Okay. So you move from a very general perspective to more specificities of writing. How do you achieve it? That's all. Okay. okay. So you have to give a background then uh, it's specified. Yes. yes. Now, um, uh, but first sentence does not initiate the reader to like have uh, have like what should I do to improve my writing? No, it doesn't have to. That's what it's. It's a general statement given in the beginning. It does not have to fulfill that purpose. It can do it in the following. See what you have seen is just a part of maybe a bigger article. The paragraph that you see on your screen, it could be a part of a bigger article which. Uh, which can be long enough to talk about what are the different kind of teaching practices that can be used in writing. Okay, you are just seeing a very short, uh, a very small extract that has been taken from somewhere. So uh, based on one paragraph, you cannot judge what the author is intending to do. You haven't yet read the whole article, right? Yes. Huh. So in one paragraph, everybody, people cannot explain you everything that you want to do. So this is a part of a larger article. So. Hmm? Okay. So now where do you use them? Where can you use such uh, patterns from uh, general to specific uh, patterns? Uh, what, where, what are these places? Introductory paragraphs. Okay. Uh, background in a research paper. So, you know, uh, I don't know who, I, I, sorry, I don't remember the name of the person who's talking about the neuroscience uh, thing. So look at this, giving backgrounds in a research paper, uh, introductory paragraphs, opening yes, paragraphs. Okay, so introductory paragraphs and opening paragraphs are two different things. Don't get confused. Opening paragraph is your very first paragraph. You know, whenever you start writing, the very first paragraph that you write is your opening. Whereas introductory paragraphs can, you know, it can keep coming in once in a while. Like you, you know, in the case of that neuroscience, you know, you begin with the neuroscience and then uh, you have an introductory article there or sorry, a paragraph there. And then while you come down to talking about um, EG signals, you have another introductory paragraph there, introducing the EG signals now. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes, so don't get confused between this. Opening is the very first one and introductory, you can have several of them in a yes. document. Right? Yeah. So you can use it there. You can use it in opening paragraphs, uh, giving backgrounds in uh, research papers, okay, for building from uh, general to specific. Uh, essays. Okay, essays will have a wide range of patterns. Now, when to use them? Usually you use them in uh, uh, mission and vision statements uh, when you're giving definitions of uh, uh, products or um, any concepts. Uh, when you're providing marketing analysis, you know, basically when you're making analysis, you begin with a general statement, then go to the specifics of what you're analyzing extra. Then reports of scientific investigations, literature reviews, okay? The literature reviews and all are not very different from, you know, this uh, research articles and all you're talking. They, they follow the same format at least. Uh, feature articles, editorials, all of these are uh, write-ups and documents where you can see the usage of uh, uh, specific to, sorry, general to specific pattern. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, is that clear? All of you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma yes, ma okay. Now the next one is specific to general. Okay, the, the reverse of what we have been looking at it. Now read this one. Please read it.
All right. Are you done reading? Yes, ma'am. It's the okay. same. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same. All you have done is you have changed the pattern. It's yeah. the same. Okay. So now you have turned, you have started off with a specific uh, thing to you have come to a very general pattern. Look at that. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. From a specific chosen language uh, ah. and some uh, specifically uh, intended resources, uh, we are going to a broader base of uh, like uh, a broader Basically, sense Basically, you are of, giving uh, the yes. details in the beginning and then saying yes. that see, all of these details can uh, help you write well. That's all. Okay. Yes. yes so that particular thing has come to the end. Uh, looking at all the details, you have now uh, deduced, uh, 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 not deduced, you have you have derived at a larger uh, meaning of the whole details that was talked about. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you first... I... Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Can I say like this means suppose we are doing an experiment, then we are analyzing the result. Finally, we are drawing a conclusion. What, what we are inferring is that this will be applicable in this particular area. In a research paper, what we are doing towards the end, which from uh -huh. the beginning, production, literature survey, all things are going on. Then experimental yes, yes. analysis. Yeah. And, and you make a broad general statement yes. about this, yes. right? Yes. yes. Exactly. Yes. Finally, it's the conclusion we are drawing the influence. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. So again, you know, like you saw in the previous pattern, in general to specific, again you will see that it's not just specific to general pattern. You also have a chronological order involved here, right? Yes. Like, yes. like in the previous one. Okay. Yes. The only change that has happened is now from general to specific, it has become from specific to general. You have given away all the details in the beginning and then you have come to the conclusion that so all of these things are a part of uh, writing as a larger process. Right? Right, right. True. Yes? True. Yes. Okay. True. Thank you. So I so, have a question. Uh, yeah. So whenever we are going from general to specific or specific to general, uh, huh. does it mean that uh, it has to have the chronology always? Meaning no, no. from the looks of it, no, it no. seems that... No, no. No, see, no, that's what I'm saying. This is this that is applicable to this particular paragraph that we have chosen. If we choose a different one, uh, then it does not. I have, you know, you 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 will see that in the activity. The the ones that you have there doesn't have anything um, related to chronology. This just happens to be a paragraph which it uh, which has it. That's all. Okay. Okay. But meaning uh, from the perspective of meaning a broad overview, when we are going from general mm -hmm. to specific, we usually, uh, you know, bottle down to an area of concentration. It's, mm -hmm. So it's sort of giving us the order in which no, it's following nothing. that process. No, no. Order is not important. All you do is you, you, you give your general statement and then you add to the details of that. Or you give a specific uh, statement and give details to that. That's all. Okay. Okay. There is no, there is no need of, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving in any chronology or a step-by-step -step process. This is just very, very, very specific to this uh, uh, paragraph that we have chosen. This is not that that won't be applicable to uh, writing per se, okay, writing a paragraph per se. Okay. Thank you. I discussed it because, you know, we have got, uh, because I had told you about, you know, presence of various patterns in paragraphs. Uh, when I noticed that, you know, this one has a chronology, I thought it was a good time to tell you that, uh, to point that out to you. That's all. It does not mean that, you know, your all paragraphs have to be a mix of these. That is your choice. It depends on what you're writing and uh, what subject you have chosen and what style you are adopting and what topic, more importantly, you have chosen. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, now, uh, uh, what are the, uh, the uh, mostly any reports, diagnostic reports, or mostly the di diagnostic reports, you know, the uh, one that um, gives you out details, you know, like, you know, what, what examples can I give? So if you're studying, uh, say, uh -huh, if you're studying, uh, say, the spread of a viral disease somewhere, okay, so then you, you list out all the symptoms, Right. He, uh, okay. There was a fever. There's a, a running nose and, you know, nausea. You mention all these things. And from that, you conclude that it could be possibly this fever. Okay. You, have you seen a diagnostic report? You know, you go to a lab, right? You get yourself tested. You, they take a blood count or whatever. And at the end, you see a report, right? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So this is that is an example of a diagnostic report. Now, uh, it, it can be, uh, you know, short like the one you get from a lab or it can be an elaborated one. 
ஜெனரல் <laughs> okay now uh, when can you use it sorry when can you use it when there is a need to discover the nature of uh, a problem what's going on yeah um, nature of a problem and the possible solutions by carefully analyzing the details so yes somebody mentioned analysis reports exactly that's what you do when there is a need to persuade the reader okay and when there is an uncertainty about the audience's attitude toward the conclusions okay so th- these are all different kinds of uh, different uh, you know events where you can use these uh, um, uh, specific to general pattern okay uh, sorry to interrupt uh, yeah. would you call uh, an economic research report say like the one that uh, rbi puts out every quarter or some sort of an economic analysis also categorized in this area because uh, those tend to start uh, picking up some indicators of mm. economy uh, yes. and then draw broader conclusion yes. based on those right so, absolutely yes okay so that would also yeah. fall in this category only that right? would also fall in this category okay, okay thank you yeah okay so uh, this is what i intend to do for uh, today with you okay i don't want to uh, you know clutter the clutter your thoughts and brain at this moment but i am going to uh, share a uh, word file with you here let me do that yes ma'am could you share the ppt also yeah that would be shared with you by the team at a later uh, point uh, right now i do not think if we have a provision to do that but i want to share with you a, a word file for you to do the activity i'm looking for that you will get it later you will definitely get it with that aishwarya are you here yes later how we'll do i do it. this aishwarya can i can post it which here one? Uh, i have a word a file document? which is ha uh, document yeah okay okay no. do i have the option to do that let me check later i'm checking cuz i don't see anything here or worst case i can share the screen that's all i mean in the meantime i have a question yeah please go ahead so, so the last slide that you uh, mentioned that uh, we need to uh, we go from specific to general when we need to convince huh. the reader so isn't this a sort of uh, meaning a mixture of your literary writing and uh, meaning it's fact but uh, the uh the author is not convinced whether uh, this would uh, be meaning it's it can be concluded so it's uh, resorting to the idea that uh, it's left to the uh, readers discretion meaning is there a mixture between literary writing here and the uh, professional writing in this case no literary writing you know it's a uh, like we mentioned before it it has several other features that you won't find in a professional writing and literary writing cannot be ri- written in a way that you do it here okay because again intended audiences are different for both right your question about uh, 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 what do you mean like does shifting of patterns uh, mean that it has literary elements is that what you yes, mean yes 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 no it's just a craft that you use here i mean it's a it, it has got nothing to do with literariness right it's it's just a it's, it's a logic that you use right 
Okay. You know, it, it it's basically a logic that the author uh, deems fit to convey his ideas properly to the reader. That's all. That has no that has that has got nothing to do with literariness. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, my question is: uh, On every Thursday, we will be having uh, this tutorial on yes, yes. writing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We'll have the session every mm -hmm. every Thursday. Okay. Every Thursday, four to five. Every Thursday, four to five. Okay. It's five and eighteen. And how many months it will be there for? How many writing? months? This will run till your uh, course for English two runs. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, ma'am, people who've already done English two in the previous semester are they eligible for this or to be able to attend this? I was told it was open for all. Okay, but then the assignments and all that. Uh, sorry, I don't know. What about the assignments? Okay, so, uh, so people who already done English two, so where do they stand on the assignments? Would these assignments be graded and added to the English two score? I don't know. I cannot answer that question. Maybe I, ma is I actually, here? yeah, ma'am. Actually, in other subjects, there are extra activity which uh, fetches us some uh, oh. extra credits uh, and which uh, really? improves our G GPA or CGPA. Oh, I see. I, I'm sorry, huh? I don't have any so uh, information is there any on that. Provision like that? I, I'm sorry. I don't have any information on that right now for this course. Uh, I don't think uh, right now. I don't have anything with me. If there's anything, I think the team will. Uh, inform you okay um, yeah i had a general question in relation to the extreme start of the lecture huh. i guess this might have been discussed but i just need a confirmation like yes. when we talk about technical papers or uh, research papers yeah that are a part of academics and like if you are completing your education you have to do a research paper or technical paper hmm. so Is that also like a very particular type of professional writing? Yeah, it is. It is. In that, it's uh, it's basically only like a limited number of people and it's targeted to a new specific yeah. audience. Like, you know, yeah, so it has all the more reasons to be professional writing, to qualify as professional writing. Okay. Ah, okay. yeah. See, anything that I... Anything that is formal in nature will uh, definitely be professional, right? That is the first thing that should come to you. Anything that has a formal uh, setup is automatically a part of the professional work. Okay. Uh, Aishwarya? Yes, Leda. Can I share it? This is an option or should I like uh, uh, share the screen? Can you please share it? Uh, share it. On I'm the already screen? sharing the yeah. screen. Yeah, yeah. I have really shared really it on the screen, yeah. but we don't have an option to uh, send it as an attachment, right? Yeah, we can give them the link. In the okay, ma'am, it can be sent in the chat box. We can download it. It as a file, you can upload it. Yeah, you can upload it in a chat box. Okay, yeah, that's what I was asking. Uh, I guess the host has options. Yeah, host has options. I don't see uh, any options on my side to do that. But anyway, uh, that's uh, I. This document will be sent across. The next time I'll figure out how to do that. But uh, you know, you see, I have about uh, five questions here in front of me. So what you have to do is very simple. You need to identify the patterns of organization in the paragraphs given below. Can you do that? Yeah, of yes, course. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, they are very short paragraphs. Not very yeah. difficult. Yeah. Please read them and tell me what you feel like. Okay. Yeah. First one is. No, have you finished specific. reading it? Please give yeah, time yeah, yeah. to others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just wait. Just what wait for exactly a moment. What do you mean by pattern of organization? Like. Uh... Patterns of organization is what we just discussed. No, specific to general, general okay, to okay, specific. Okay. 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 Huh. okay. Just give it two minutes. Uh, let others also read it, and when we we can discuss all of them together. Uh, at least the first. Uh, read the first two.
ma'am uh, can we answer now yeah just just a minute more no okay. i don't think everybody might have finished reading just we'll wait for a minute more and then you can give the answer okay All right. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, uh, I think the, the first one is uh, general to general specific. To specific. Yes, right. Right. The second is the vice versa. Specific. Yeah, right. Yes, yes. Yeah, sure. Yes. First one is general to specific. Can you explain one of you? Uh, How did because, you understand that? Because it is explaining, I mean, I think this is due to the fact that uh, it's explaining mm -hmm. what is pulses. Then mm -hmm. from there it is getting the graphs and when 23 percent and it's not explaining what is pulses. It is. It is, uh, it is huh. starting with pulses. It's starting with huh. pulses. It, it's making a point about it. Yeah, it's uh, making a point about uh, uh, importance role pulses. in yeah sustaining food and nutritional security. So when you're reading, no, please make sure that you uh, comprehend these things. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah. What is it? So, like in the first sentence, pulses play an important role in sustaining food and nutritional security as well as environmental sustainability in India. It's not about pulses. It's I'm about course, pulses, uh, but I'm the main point I'm, is about the other things, right? And the first half of the paragraph is just about uh, the like overall description. The second hmm. part of the paragraph is much more about the data. So that yeah, is, it's a facts and figures. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah so it has begun with a general, uh, you know, commentary and then have gone into. Facts in and depth, details. In right? depth data, yes. Yeah. So in that this is an data. easy, this is a, a, a straightforward case of a general to specific uh, pattern, right? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, no? yeah, yeah. Okay. yes any no. disagreements? People no. who are listening, no, right? If you have any uh, objections to raise, please do, because this is important. You need to learn this uh, logic at this moment. If it, if you are uh, confused, then you should ask. Okay. Uh, so the next one. During the same period, population grew at faster rate. Now it is. This is a related specific case. Specific to general, ma'am. This one. Specific to general. Uh, yes. You need to explain. Ma okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, here, uh, the facts of the uh, related to the pulses production uh, across across uh, the time. Uh, uh -huh. Say uh, here is 2015 uh, to 16, and uh -huh. from that uh, they are going uh, on to a conclusion of what its impact is on the market as well as the demand and supply of the uh, uns uh, unpredictability of the demands and supplies uh, hmm. of uh, on that yes yes is, is that agreeable to others too yeah it it's starts with first, facts and figures the and then approaches one at a time huh? one at a time ma'am the uh, in the starting of the paragraph second one uh, mm -hmm. first first the paragraph has described about each and every data so mm -hmm. according on according to the data the entire uh, analysis has been given okay what what exactly has been uh, like yeah. inferred, inferred from and the, the last sentence based on uh, all of that is talked about says poor no, that's production that's uh, performance of pulses know. coupled with lack of assured market creates imbalance okay basically reinforced was already mentioned but now after having given the facts and details Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma the the yeah. exact opposite of the first. Paragraph. Exact opposite of what has happened in the first paragraph. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. Okay. Agreeable. No objections. People who are yes, listening. Yes, no Okay. Why would it also be like cause and effect? It can be cause and effect. Uh, I did not mention it because we hadn't come to that. It can be cause and effect. Okay. Okay, ma'am. It can be cause and effect. Uh uh, so there is also, uh, I thought one of you will tell me, but there is also uh, a mention of um, logical order. You look at the word that, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, here. Consequently, the per capita availability of pulses. Didn't you catch that word? People who are reading. So when I say consequently. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is there anybody here? Huh. Yeah. Yeah, it, it sort of tries to give you a, a order, no, that this happened next. Yes, yes. Okay. So, okay, I was just pointing out, you know, I'll keep pointing out things as it comes to me, I because I want you to pay attention to these. Uh, because these words like consequently, first, second, all of them are very, very important in building your paragraphs and writing effectively. They have a very major role to play in 
uh, writing a good and effective uh, readable document okay professional document Basically, so pay attention to these things okay these are what you call as connectors or transition uh, words or sequence words uh, you know they help you build your paragraphs uh, and write effectively write with clarity too okay uh, now the next one the amazons uh, i think this is a straightforward thing our vision is to be earth's most customer centric company to build a place where people can come to find and discover anything they might want to buy online general to specific just a general, general statement general statement general to specific no it is also specific because it tells you where you buy it you know they can buy it online the next one is uh, specific to what is already mentioned so customer centric company there are many companies all of them are customer centric what is special about it it is online also okay okay yeah so general basically yeah you are right it's a general statement and moves from general to specific no problem uh, the next one <clears throat> an owner must feed his dog make sure he has clean water and assist the dog with grooming the dog needs his hair combined and trimmed his nails polished and cut and his shorts and checkups owning dog is hard work specific to this one no, is specific, specific, specific to general specific to general straight away right major yes, point here was you you have given all the details and at the end you made a general conclusion from that yes it is hard work and difficult to own a dog right very clear yes right. ma'am okay yes, now the very last one this should be easy please read it specific to general it was a specific yes, for men and specific then moved on specific to general yes ma'am general okay. to specific ma'am i think it is general to specific general, general to specific general, 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 general to specific yeah yeah general to okay, specific okay okay wait people who said specific to general can you tell me why did you feel like it is specific to general uh ma'am uh, at first uh, in the first line uh, it uh, it is explaining uh, the participation of the women in entrepreneurship uh, that is uh, their participation which uh, in turn have uh, their uh, social status uh, and also the decision making skills uh, uh, given uh, giving them a whole new approach and that uh, is snowballing uh, to uh, for to developing their own financial independence as as But well as isn't that all a part of the entrepreneurship thing that they have mentioned before hmm? participation of women in entrepreneurship plays a key role in the socio economic transformation okay that's a statement they have made now what happens in the next apart from advancing the economic empowerment of women it's talking again about entrepreneurship it's giving more details about the entrepreneurship that they already mentioned they explain the how of it yeah they giving more details about how to do it okay what are the uh, things that would come under the gamut of uh, entrepreneurship of women did you not catch that um uh, there are two keywords socio and economic so the first sentence is general and then it goes to talk about the social social part of it and then the economic part yes yes right no i am talking to the first see people who have identified it as general to specific is fine i am talking to the ones who said it is specific to general ha huh. i'm just trying to walk them through what they are reading that's all okay where 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 are the ones have you guys left the ones who answered specific no, to general uh, yeah i am here you here so yes, so you so do you get my point yes ma'am hmm? yes ma'am right so if you read it again you will understand right they have mentioned about entrepreneurship as the first one and then they go ahead to talk about how to achieve this okay So yes, it's from a general thing. They're moving to the details of what has been told before, right? Yes, ma'am. No confusions. No, no confusion. No confusions. Okay, so uh, this is what I have you uh, have for you today. I think um, 
we have had enough time. We've uh, discussed for over one and a half hours. So, uh, is this? Huh? So, is this uh, okay for you? Uh, Ma'am, I have one doubt. Uh, who is it? Yeah, it's me, Parth. So, yeah, the me. first two paragraphs were there, right? What if yeah. we combine them because they were in continuous sequence, right? Where did you find this out? Did you go and read the report? No, 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 no. I was reading the okay. Word document, right? Uh -huh. okay. So, the first two paragraphs were there. Uh -huh. If we link them. If they you, seem so, like let me tell you them. because you asked me this. In the yeah. original document of the Niti Aayog, this is combined as one full okay. big paragraph. So, isn't that like okay. general to specific to general? Yes. So, it is general to specific it is general to specific when you read it as a whole mm -hmm. it becomes general to specific yeah but then they also have the conclusion at the end regarding huh. the the conclusion thing. becomes the general statement of every detail that went before that okay okay so, like we we saw in the case of that uh, paragraph in writing okay you can do this activity i'll share this uh, uh, file with you okay so you can combine this two together and see what happens to it Okay, I, I divided it on purpose. I saw this, this in original, it was a one big paragraph. I split it to show you the transition from general to specific. But what you can do is, you know, when I share it, you combine it together and see what happens with it. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, this, if we don't have any doubts, uh, can we call it a day? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fine, yeah. yeah. Not exhausted. You've been yes, sitting for 1.5 hours. I think yeah, yeah, enough yeah. for today. We'll meet next week. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah ma'am. Right. Thank, thank, thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you,